So, this case is about branding, uh, automobile branding in China. And we have a Korean company, and one of the things we want to learn from this case is the importance of global brand. Okay, so it's important for Hyundai and Kia to have a global brand when we're in a foreign country. And then we want to look at the, lo the local strategy. What kind of branding strategy should we have in China? In the corporate level, company level, and the individual car, because we have different individual cars. Okay? And then we're, you are going to decide at the end, you have a car, and you're going to decide some branding strategy for this car you have to sell in China. Okay? So one of the main questions we said is, how much should we use the global brand? How much should we use the local brand? Okay? So first let's go through the information of the, of the important information of the case. So uh, let's start then with uh, the automobile industry in China. Or, well, the introduction. Who, who read the introduction part? In the last time? The first part, the introduction. Did I give that part to anybody to read? So, let's have a look at the introduction then. So we have this, uh, we're looking at Hyundai, and Hyundai has a car called the NFU Shang. The NFU Shang car is local, local branding, okay? that is Korea Chinese branding. Okay? Uh, well, it's doing badly. In, co in contrast, uh, the four international brands are doing well for Hyundai. So, the, the CEO of Hyundai, or the president of Beijing Hyundai Motor Corporation, the joint venture, right? We have B HMC, that is a joint venture of Hyundai and Beijing Motors. So he's worried about that. Okay. So again, uh, in this case, we have kind of a problem case, so <coughs> when we go to the case, at the end, you're going to need to write down the problem, okay, the information, and the analysis, okay, some action plan. Uh, so, the, they also had a brand power study of Hyundai, so they have room for improvement on the brand. On what? On changing awareness into purchase. So we were talking about primary research the last night, so we can actually look at this study, we can see that it says here number one, so it's the, in the file we can see the exhibit one, about that.
So here is, uh, they made some analysis of the consumer pro purchase process. So they have these different steps. So we have awareness. Do we know the brand? Do you understand awareness? Yes. So the question is, how aware are you of the brand? Are you aware of the brand? Mm -hmm. And familiarity. Familiarity is stronger than awareness. Awareness means just I heard the name. I know it exists. Familiarity means I know something about it. I'm familiar with it. Okay? I can tell you the logo, the slogan. That kind of thing. Opinion is stronger. I have an opinion about the brand. Okay? I like the brand. I don't like the brand. Okay? And then even stronger, I consider that when I'm buying. When I'm purchasing a car, I consider, I think about that brand. Okay? So that's a kind of primary research. They ask these people, right? This is the average for the, all the cars industry in China. Okay? People are aware of the brands, 85% of people. Familiar with the brands? Okay? So we get the average, we can compare it to the average. And here is Beijing. Hyundai Motor Company. Awareness is higher than average. Okay, it's 92. A lot of people are aware of the company. But the problem is their consideration when buying is lower than the average. Okay, can you see that? So they have good awareness. People know about their brand. But not that many people are considering their brand when they're purchasing, when they're buying the new car. So they're worried about those points. So we can see that kind of research. Okay. These are they get the average of the other brands. These are the competitors with their names disguised. So that is the type of primary research. We do the primary research to get that kind of data. So we can see the questions in the introduction, which is, how should we use our branding to make the better sales? Okay, what do we need to change about our branding? So, Should we change about the branding to promote sales? Okay, they're thinking about that. How can we change the branding to make more sales? Especially of this one, right? This one is a disappointing. We'll see more in the min in a minute. So then, the automobile industry in China, the market size. Who read that part? Market size. In the last class I divided up, I gave at least two students this part to read. Which two students were reading that part? Sim Song Min, what part were you reading? Uh, market segments. Market segments. Kim Ye Ran? Yes. What part were you reading? Demand structure. Demand structure? Yes. E Ming Yu? What part were you reading? Introduction. E Ming uh, Zhao Yan, what part were you reading? Market size. Anybody else who was reading? <laughs> Okay. Anybody else read? So, did you read that part? Hmm? Did you read the part about market size? Forgot. Okay. Then we'll just write down the important point. Right. So, from ninety-two to zero two. We had 15% annual growth. So, 10 times the global average. 
Okay, the global average is 1.5%. Okay? So 15% growth in the car industry is very big. Okay? So in 2005, it was the third largest market in the world for cars. Okay, maybe it's its second market now, right? So you can tell that a lot of car companies want to sell their cars in China. Fast growing and large markets. Okay, so we can see it may not just be for cars, but also other segments too. L'Oreal were also interested in the emerging markets. Okay. So next one is market segments. Who wrote, who read about market segments? Yes? Uh, this part is about financial passenger car market. The three of these uh, three segments. segments. Yeah. What are they? Sedans, multi pose vehicles, and sport utility vehicles. What are sedans? Sedan is the uh, so biggest, biggest segment. 90%, yes. right? What are sedans? What is a sedan? A kind of car is that? Sonata. Hmm? Sonata. So it's a normal car, right? And that's divided further into different segments. So uh, we, if we look at, if you have the thing, you can look at exhibit two, right? Uh, the market demand. Uh, for the cars, they divide up the family car into different segments, right? A, B, C1, C2, D1. So we can see that 90% is D. 90% uh, is these ones. And here we have MPV. What's a multi purpose vehicle? For example, hmm? like Jeep. Do you know Jeep? And go off road, that kind of thing. Okay? An SUV, the big car where seven people can sit in the car. Okay? But they are here, there are 114,000 sold in China, 86,000. But this, the C2 segment of the car, is the largest one. And the sedans is uh, the largest one. Right? Here we can see the growth rate. In 2002, Growth rate was 54 percent, 74 percent growth in 2003. Okay, so high growth rate in the car sales. Okay, so then next one is demand structure. So in the era, what did you find out here? So we have more affluent consumers. Affluent means wealthy. Affluent consumers is increasing. Opposite. Normal consumers purchased 80%. It used to be that government and businesses were buying, but nowadays just normal consumers are buying. Okay, anything else? Are price sensitive. Chinese students, are you price sensitive? Personally, I think quality is more important. Also, I care about the chances of the origin of that product. It's more important. I value it to, uh, it's not only the price. I, my, my eyesight will not only stick at the price, quality, and uh, other things, uh, other points. Okay, other Chinese students, what about you guys? Are you price sensitive? I'm very price sensitive. Are you price sensitive? Yeah, me too. I will buy a cheaper one. Hmm? I will buy a cheaper one. 
Yeah. Where do you buy your clothes? Mm. Uniqlo? I usually buy in Uniqlo. Cheap price. Something like that. Right? Yeah. What about you? Are you price sensitive? Yes? Okay. Do you think Chinese people generally are more price sensitive than Korean people? They worry more about the price? Oh, uh, no. Don't <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, anyway, when they do the primary research, they ask them about the price, right? They have fuel efficiency. They say the important thing is fuel efficiency and price when they're buying a car. Okay? Same for me. I have. Now, Kia Pride, most fuel efficient car, right? Very cheap diesel and does 20 kilometers for one liter. So, most fuel efficient car in Korea and good price. That's why I bought the car. So, I like the Chinese customers, right? That's an important thing for me. Uh, so, if we do the primary research, we ask people, why? What's important for you? when you're buying a car. How important is price, one to five? How important is other type of performance, right? One to five, and then we find out that kind of information. Okay, so anything else here? Okay, so we have important is style and image. So younger people may be different than the... Do you think that there's a generational difference in China between the younger people and the older people? Because yes, younger people, they don't really care about the price and how much they're going to spend on something. But mm -hmm. the older people usually, they are playing. Mm -hmm. Because they know it's very hard to make money, but young people usually really care. Especially the second and rich generation. Okay, so you mean young people have more money? Oh. So they, they, they don't care as much? Their parents. Hmm? <laughs> yes, but so parents understand more the value of money. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, young people they don't really understand how hard, uh, how how hard they can make money, especially that's mm. called like a second, uh, second rich generation. They, they have, have a name for that in Chinese. Chinese. Yeah. Mm. So they can they can have a lot of potential, but they just to consume luxury brands and luxury stuff. Okay. So they are more worried a little bit about the style and the image. Okay, so uh, this is their kind of emotional things, how we can sell the uh, car. So here it also says that they don't have much brand, brand loyalty because it's the first <coughs> brand loyalty is down. Because usually it's their first purchase. If you buy a car, like I buy a Kia car, and then I say, oh that's great, Kia, no problem then maybe I'll keep buying the Kia car, right? But if it's your first purchase, they don't have much brand loyalty to the cars, okay? And also they shop around more, shop around. They check a lot of different places before they buy. Okay, so the next one is the competitive competition. So who was reading about the competition? Yes, what can you tell us? Uh, June 2006, there, were, there was about 145 car makers in China. Mm -hmm. uh, 43 of them were passenger making cars. Okay, so mm -hmm. mainly just 43 is the main, they're making the same passenger cars. Anything else? Uh, Seventy percent of these passenger car, make, car makers was there. Seventy percent of the Chinese market. What do you mean? Share uh, <laughs> of sales. Of who? These passenger car makers. Who? In the Chinese market. 
So it's joint, not the passenger car makers, no. joint ventures. Joint ventures between the international company and Chinese company is 70% of the sales, right? So what kind of what kind of joint ventures do we have? What kind of competitors does Hyundai Beijing Hyundai have? FAWDMC, SAIC, this one. So who is the main? Who is the main uh, competitor? The main three. It says the top three here. Who are the top three? Shanghai GM. Who else? Shanghai Volkswagen. Yeah. And. FAW Volkswagen. So Volkswagen is quite popular in China. Okay? So if we look at uh, the exhibit, we can see that the top three, exhibit four, is Volkswagen, GM, and uh, Hyundai Kia. They're the main uh, sellers in the Chinese market. Okay? So the main competitor, GM and Volkswagen. Uh, here. So then the car brands, who read about car brands? Yes, kind of titles like car brands. Uh, car market in China is highly competitive. Every year there are a number of new launching car models. As a result of a high number of car models, uh, sales per model dropped. Okay, so we have a high number of models. Yep. So each, they're the company, but they have different cars, right, and different models. High number of models. So we have lower percentage of sales per model. It makes sense. If we release more models, we have some cannibalization. That means people who would have bought another model buy a different one. Okay, what were the top models? Selling in China? Uh, top models uh, in D1 section. Uh, there is Volkswagen's, uh, Volkswagen's San, Santana. Okay. Uh, and in D2 section, there is Honda's uh, Accord Yage, 23%. Mm -hmm. In SUV, uh, Honda's CRV is uh, 29%. Australia. Okay. So then market dynamics, who read about market dynamics? So what can you tell us about that part? In China has uh, over a couple of cities in car make and because many international automakers attracted the third largest market. China mm -hmm. and Chinese bank cut credit for car purchase to pull down the potentially overheated market and plus increase in the price of oil. Okay, so we have to always look at the market dynamic, what's happening in the market. So the government is reducing the credit because they think the car market is growing too very quickly, right? means that people don't get the loans as easily. They bring in some control. The banks can't give the loan to the people. Why right? people have to have this 50% cash if they want to get the car. 50% cash, 50% loan, right? Normally people can buy the car with 90% loan and just 10% cash. So they do that kind of thing. And uh, <coughs> we can see all over the world the car market has overcapacity. In Europe, they also US, they have overcapacity. Okay, but governments uh, support the car industry, right? Governments bring in programs in Europe like Cash for Clunker program. Have you heard of that? Cash for Clunker, your car is 10 years old, the government will give you some cash if you give them your car. Then the point is you buy a new car, right? That kind of thing. 
So uh, then uh, Hyundai Motors Company, who read that part? What can you tell us? Um, the Hyundai started with manufacturing, uh, manufac uh, manufacturing cars like light trucks, mm -hmm. but in but in early 1970s, they uh, the company started to make its own uh, passengers automobile, the pony. Mm -hmm. It get very it, it got a high success and the company became very uh, popular with uh, with Korean people. Do you remember the pony? <laughs> no. No. In the 70s, never saw any. <laughs> so Hyundai has about half of the car market in Korea. Yeah. Very big Korean company. Anything else? Uh, <clears throat> later, they, they, uh, the company started to expand its market share to the global markets. Mm -hmm. And And it's just got a quite, quite a success. Mm -hmm. And in its long term objective of objective is to elevate its brand value to become one of the world's top five automobile brands. Okay, so it wants to Hyundai is a very large company, right? In hundred and ninety three countries. And it has uh, long term goal to uh, rank among the world's top 30 brands, right? Not just including the cars, but just in the brand. It wants to be on the top 30 companies in the world. So it's, it wants to grow. Okay, it's quite globalized. We can see it has manufacturing subsidies in many different countries, including China. So then let's take a break now uh, for 10 minutes.